All right, I'm here with Paul Macbeth. Now, Paul, for 2014, let's see, three-time world champion. From my point of view, you've had a pretty good year. But tell us, tell everybody maybe some highs and lows of 2014 for you. Uh, I mean, it's been, yeah, it's been a pretty good year. Four national tours, two majors, not as many as last year, but I mean, I, I was more consistent in the majors this year. Uh, third, a second, and two firsts. So, uh, I mean, that was a lot better and more, the most NT wins I've had all year, or of any year. So, um, you could, I guess, say it's been a pretty good year. Yeah, did you hit every goal that you really set for yourself for 2014? Yeah, and some. Um, I think the 1050 was this year. Uh, I didn't expect that. Yeah. I was, that wasn't something I was shooting for, uh, but with the consistent play, it's really brought that rating up. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the goal is to win every turn I'm at, well, yeah. and I won more than half. So I mean, I guess that's a that's a doing good. So awesome. Now I know a lot of people watch the USDGC coverage, mm -hmm. and it was a pretty tense uh, uh, playoff there. Tell us kind of what goes through your head whenever you go into those really tense playoffs for those big titles. Uh, I mean, they're fun because any bad shot's going to, you know, be the end of it. And it's not really the mindset you have when you go into the tournaments. You know, you, you want to have as few mistakes as possible. But when it comes to a playoff, whoever makes the first mistake loses. And uh, I don't know, just Will, I don't think I've ever beat him in a playoff. Mm. We've had multiple ones, and yeah. I think he's got me in all of them. So I need to figure out how to get over that hump. Yeah. Now, um, I know the NTEs are kind of, you know, the NTEs are over and things like that, but is there really an off-season for Paul McBeth? Yeah, finally. Oh, really? Finally. Um, this winter, VPO is my last one next weekend. Okay. And uh, then it's nothing until the Australia. It's just training and working. So, I mean, you can call it an off-season because I'm not playing tournaments, but I'm still working to get better and improve. And this one would typically be a longer off-season than normal, but yeah. with Australia – being in January, it kind of cuts it short. But, uh, yeah, this is kind of probably going to be my first true, true off-season. Now, uh, off-season for you, does that mean less playing, more playing, casual rounds? Or what, what, what is an off-season practice for you? Uh, probably more, more playing, more, I guess, technical things. I'm not on the course playing. Okay. I'm more, like, indoors training, uh, working my body mentally, trying to, you know, regroup, and uh, then just – getting release and trying to get consistency. I'm not going out there and throwing the course, like I said, but I'm going to be indoors throwing into a net and trying to get the form dialed in to where I could just go out and throw any shot I want. And uh, so it's it's going to be a lot of training off the course. Off the course. Yeah. Would you say that that, I mean, a lot of people like to take breaks and not play for a while and give their body a break, but is that, do you, would you recommend that for people that are going to train for 20 next year? Uh, if you're, I mean, if you're touring all the time yeah. and playing every day, then yeah, you kind of need those breaks. Let your muscles, you know, regroup because if you're throwing over and over and over, you're just going to stretch them. Um, so uh, letting them regroup and do that stuff, I think breaks are good. And mentally, it's a it's a relief relief not yeah. going every week and worrying sure. about a tournament. Yeah. Now I know a lot. If you guys don't know, uh, Paul McBeth has on Spin TV on that YouTube channel. Yes. You do kind of like a. I mean, I guess you say like a web reality series where your brother kind of follows mm -hmm. you around and stuff like that. Um, what's that like to always have a camera in your face? Uh, I wish he had it more. Oh, I really? Yeah, he misses a lot of things that go on on the road. But uh, uh, it was pretty good to try it out yeah. and work on it. And uh, it, it's cool because people like seeing that stuff. Yeah. It's something that uh, hasn't been filmed before yeah. and things like that. So it was pretty cool and a neat experience, and hopefully it, it grows into something more. Yeah, so 2015 you'll be doing some more of that? I don't know. My brother won't be with me next year, so oh, we'll no. see. I was kind of surprised not to see him here at Oklahoma Open. Yeah, he left right after USDGC, oh, so okay, there was cool. a pretty lengthy break between this these two events. So, yeah, uh, cool. Yeah. Now, um, something away from disc golf, I guess. What, what If you weren't playing disc golf, what would you be doing right now? Uh, shoot, I'm 24 now. <laughs> Probably finishing up, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, doing something. Yeah. I, I don't know if it would be... Like a typical job, though. Yeah. You know, because I played sports growing up my whole life, so I'd probably be coaching, like, baseball or doing something like that. Uh, but, yeah, I don't think it would be a normal type of job. Yeah, I know that. I mean, I remember uh, a while back you, you played a lot of baseball, right? Yeah, and up until 2011. Yeah. Did you, do you miss that at all, or do you kind of follow any baseball? Once in a while. I can't follow it as much being on the road all the right. time. I don't know the schedules. I can't watch games and things like that. Football's. I'm getting a lot more into football yeah. because of – it's going on in the winter when I'm not playing, and and uh, so that's more exciting. But I do miss baseball once in a while. Just yeah. the non, just the action of having a ball hit to you and yeah. being up, having a pitcher right in front of you. So I miss that excitement once in a while. But 
I get the same feeling from disc golf and, and such things like the playoffs and the majors. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, where do you see Paul McMath in five years? Hopefully a few more world titles. Yeah. Still number one. Uh, but, I mean, that's the goal, but I have, I have no clue where I'll be next year. So, <laughs> so shoot five years, uh, I mean, it, that's at the jump. But uh, doing disc golf, some, still playing tournaments, doing all that stuff, and uh, hopefully getting closer to Kenny. Getting close to Kenny, yeah, that'll Hopefully. be nice, yeah. Now, for all the people that are watching that are aspiring to maybe go touring and become pro, what advice would you give them? <sighs> Practice a lot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it can be ex expensive. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's that's probably the hardest people, hardest thing for most people is financially. Um, you know, if you want to go test it out for a month or something, save up, go try it out, see if you like it. I wouldn't say go full on tour for one year. Um, and let, like, like Johnny, it took Johnny what years yeah. 10 years yeah. 15 years who knows uh, until he finally went on his first tour he's loving it but i don't know if we'll see him next year yeah what uh, what mistakes would you say that you wish you would have known that you learned within the last couple years touring mistakes um i don't know i've enjoyed you know pretty yeah. much every every minute of it maybe play a little bit less hmm. um i know down the line somewhere i'm gonna want to enjoy the places i go more right but right now, I just want to play tournaments and win tournaments. Uh, I can go back and enjoy those places later uh, or look back on it. But, yeah, I wouldn't say I have any mistakes. Maybe just play fewer tournaments. Um, but Cool. Yeah. All we'll right. See. Well, thank you very much, Paul. I appreciate your time with us. Thank you.